Hello and welcome to the one trading secret that could make you rich inside days. What inside days are, how to identify them, the setup, how they work, entrance criteria, management, exit criteria for maximum profits, and much more. I want to thank you uh, for purchasing this video and joining me today. My name is David Vallier. I'm the uh, founder of TradingOlogy.com. And I'm going to take you through the uh, setup for this video and the trading strategy that uh, I think is probably one of the most dynamic trading strategies around. There's lots of different kinds of setups that you could get into in the market, but this one is a particularly active form of trading. And it has, uh, I mean, some of the benefits of this particular setup is that it's low risk, uh, it has specific entry and exit criteria. They're easy, the setup is easy to identify, and um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So stick with me here as we go through it. Some of the material may be absolutely brand new to you. Some of it may be, you know, just uh, a review for some of you. But uh, please stick with me because I think you're going to find this incredibly rewarding. I really do and sincerely mean that this could be the one strategy that could make you rich. If you're interested in uh, actively trading, uh, there's lots of opportunities to do these types of trades in just about every single market um, for securities out there. And I think you're going to find that um, once you learn how to identify them, you're going to be seeing quite a few of these opportunities available to you that you can trade on a regular basis. And uh, there's absolutely no limit to the number that you can trade, of course. Um, but let's get into exactly what inside days are if you're not familiar with what an inside, inside day is. Uh, an inside day is a day that has a lower high and a higher low than the previous day. Uh, for example, we're taking a look right now at a chart of American Express and I've come back to a particular trade uh, that we're going to be setting up here as in our, our example trade which uh, we count as uh, day one. The day, in other words, the, the day in which we identify the inside day is considered day one. And this happens to be on February 11th of 2008. As you can see, uh, let me just uh, draw a little circle around these days so that you can get a better sense of what I'm talking about. The first bar here is a, this is a daily chart again. The first bar is a fairly wide-ranging bar, in other words, the low and the high, uh, encompass uh, a couple points on American Express. And the day that follows that is a relatively short bar. In other words, the high and the low falls within uh, the range that, of the previous bar. In fact, it's probably less than 50% of the previous bar's range. Though that's ideal for the setup that we're looking for. This is called an inside day. Uh, most of the time inside day, days are also narrow range bars, which this is. It's a fairly narrow bar inside of a larger bar. And we call those narrow inside bars or nibs. It's, it's really amazing once you learn how to identify an inside bar. You, you begin to see these quite frequently in your charts. It doesn't matter what stock you're looking at. This happens to be American Express. And of course this is not a recommendation of American Express. Uh, to buy or sell their securities, but I'm using this only as an example. There are many stocks out there, uh, in fact there's probably hundreds or even thousands of stocks that display this type of inside bar uh, on a regular basis on their daily charts. So once we have uh, the uh, inside bar, we understand what the definition of an inside bar is, you can begin looking through your charts to see where you can find an inside bar. Now the objective of the strategy really is to accumulate short-term profits on a consistent basis using, as I mentioned, objective entry and exit criteria. It really can be used on any liquid stock on a daily time frame. We're not looking at weekly charts, we're not looking at monthly charts, we're not looking at intraday charts. Uh, we're looking at daily charts only for this particular strategy. The strategy itself, uh, over the time pe period that we've measured it, has an 84% chance of hitting our profit target number one, a 16% chance of hitting our profit target number two, and a 9% chance of hitting our profit target number three. And I will go through the criteria and the calculations for each one of our profit targets. Uh, there's a high probability of pr 
profit in this trade, but there's also a risk of loss if the trade doesn't work as planned. And the maximum risk is really greater than or equal to the range of the inside day. Uh, risk is managed using uh, stop loss limit orders. And uh, there are additional risks, of course, to holding stock besides uh, stop limit orders, which you should be aware of. And, you know, if you're not an experienced trader, then you should understand what those risks are. And one of those risks I'll just mention briefly is the fact that even if you do put a trade on for a stock, it could gap uh, uh, much higher or much lower than your entry, creating losses greater than we've mentioned here. Okay, let's identify inside days or nibs. Uh, basically, in any stock, you have bars. Now, I, we use exclusively in Tradingology the uh, candlestick uh, charts, the Japanese candlestick charts. We think it's easier to identify inside days using Japanese candlestick charts. The only real definition of an inside day is that you have a lower high, which this does. This particular bar has a high that is uh, at 45.74, and the bar that follows it has a high of 44.57. So it definitely has a lower high. But in order to meet our definition, it also has to have a higher low. Well, the low of this particular bar is 43.54. The low of this bar is 43.71. So it does have a higher low as well. Let's zoom in just a little bit here and we can get a better sense of exactly. That's what an inside day looks like. Now, in addition to being a lower high and a higher low, We'd also like to see this inside day about 50% or about half the size of the bar that precedes it. In this case, you can see it's probably a little bit less than half of the size of the previous bar. That provides us with a low risk opportunity to enter a position in which this trade is, hopes to capitalize on. If the inside day is a little bit larger than this, even if it's 50%, 60%, maybe even 70%, sometimes that has the potential to work. Uh, but we'd like to see this particular inside day as small as possible. Um, it does not necessarily have to have a small real body like this particular uh, candlestick has uh, or what's uh, called a spinning top. And if you're not familiar with uh, candlestick terminology, that's not required to utilize a strategy. Um, but what I want to take a look at is the particular uh, inside day in relation to the bar, bar prior to it. You want it to have a relatively small body, a relatively small and narrow range compared to the day before it. Let me zoom ahead here uh, on the same chart in American Express to uh, June 12th. And I'll show you a particular inside day that I would not trade. Here we have a large red bar which indicates that bears were in charge of this day. Uh, the, the American Express stock sold off pretty dramatically on this particular day. The very next day you have a bar in which there was a lower high and a higher low than the, this particular bar. That would fit, fit the definition of an inside day. The only problem with this particular bar is it's almost the same range as the bar that precedes it. So in when we're looking at identifying inside days, yes, it does fit the definition, but I would not trade this particular inside day. I would like to have an inside day that's approximately 50% or less of the, the bar that precedes it. That's just my personal choice. Uh, we have traded 60% uh, or even 70% of the previous bars range uh, using inside days with success, but generally if you want to keep your risk as low as possible, then you'd like to have a, a smaller uh, inside day bar or na narrow range bar in comparison to the one uh, that you're measuring it against the previous day's bar. Okay, so once you've identified an inside bar that you'd like to take advantage of, 
uh, the only thing that you really need to do is to go to your drawing tools. Now most uh, brokers software platforms include uh, a number of different technical analysis tools and many of those also include channel tools. In the platform that we're using, it's this is the Thinkorswim platform, uh, and we're using the profit charts. All we do is go into our drawing tools, come down to our channel, click on that, come over to the place where we would like to start the channel, and we want to start the channel right at the high of this particular bar we click right click on that and then we draw, draw out the uh, the beginning of the channel on the uh, top of the bar and then we simply click again right click again as soon as I can get this straight here doesn't have to be perfect but and then we just drag this down to the lower end of the bar that sets up our channels now in this particular case I have a higher end channel, I have a lower channel at the bottom of the uh, particular bar and I also have these 25 percent channels inside of those bars and I will explain to you for aggressive traders uh, when we get into our entrance criteria exactly how I use those. But that's how you begin. You begin by drawing the channel against this particular bar, our inside day this gives us our the beginning of our setup it's important to understand why this particular trade works the goals uh, really of, of bulls and bears are always to push prices higher uh, if you're a bull of course or lower if you're a bear than the previous day's high or low when that doesn't happen then their power struggle ends in frustration inside days happen when there's really a fight between the bulls and the bears. In fact, there's, uh, the strength of the bears and the bulls are about equal and neither side really gains any ground in pushing the stock higher or lower and that's why it ends up as a day that has a less of a range of movement than the prior day. So neither side could push the price in the direction they wanted and it creates a little bit, just a little movement in either direction and that creates short-term frustration. Usually the power struggle lasts no more than a day. It's extremely rare to have an uh, narrow inside bar followed by another narrow inside bar. In fact, the odds are extremely low that you would have an inside day followed by another inside, inside day. If you ever see one, you might want to add to your position because the price move could be really outstanding. Trading inside days is like trading a shook up bottle of soda pop or whatever you like to call sweet carbonated drinks in a bottle. When you shake the bottle, you twist off the cap and it explodes. Those who wanted to push the prices higher or lower will try again the next day and usually one side will overpower the other and win. It's like a tug of rope. Eventually one side is going to dominate. For example, if the bulls outnumber the bears, then on the following day prices will go higher. And conversely, if the bears outnumber the bulls, then on the following day the prices will go lower. And that's how we profit. We simply take the side of the group that has the most power to push prices in their direction. Specific criteria um, is going to help you stay out of trouble and minimize your losses. So let's get into the entrance criteria for trading inside days. The entrance criteria could not be easier. However, I don't re recommend placing this trade just prior to an earnings announcement. Uh, since you're only going to be in the trade for a few days, really four at most, you can plan accordingly. If you know that earnings are coming up, I would stay out of the trade because of the potential um, uh, potential for the stock to either gap very much higher or very much lower than your entry prices. Our entry criteria for this position is basically what we do is we take a penny above the high of the uh, nib to enter our long position and one, pe one penny below the low of the nib to enter our short position. Let's take a look at exactly where those positions are. For this particular inside day, our entry on the long position would be $44.58 on the long side. Now, if we, as I hover my mouse over this particular inside day bar, you can take a look up here to see exactly where the high was. The high was $44.57 on this day. 
we simply add a penny to that and we create our entry price of $44.58. At the same time, what we want to do is create our entry price for the lower end of the trade. If you take a look at this bar again, you can see that the low is $43.71. So we want to subtract a penny from that and create our entry at $43.70 short. In other words, if the uh, price the very next day breaks through the lower end of this uh, inside day's trading range, then we want to go short at $43.70. If it goes above the high of the trading range of this inside bar, it, then we want to go long at $44.58. What we want to do is we want to see who has the most power on the day after this inside day is created. We want to see which way, uh, the who's going to win this tug of war. Is it going to be the bears or is it going to be the bulls? The things that you need to calculate include the range of this particular bar. If we take the high of the bar, which is 44.57, and we subtract it from the low, which is 43.71, we get a range of the inside day of 86 cents. In order for us to determine our targets, what we do, we take the range of the price and simply add it to our entry price. In this case, our first target is 44 dollars and or 45 dollars and 44 cents which is 44 dollars and 58 cents our entry price plus the range which is 86 cents for a target uh, first profit target of 45 dollars and 44 cents now before this bar was created we would have these set up on our charting system our second profit target is created in the exact same way. We would take our range, which is 86 cents, and add it to target number one, which is $45.44. Uh, normally, it's a little bit easier for me to take the target number one of 45.54 or 45.44, and just add the 86 cents to it to get target number two, which is $46.30. To calculate our third uh, profit target, all we have to do is add 86 cents to profit target number two, and we come up with profit target number three. In this particular example, uh, we count the inside day as day one, we count the very next day as day two, the next day after that, day three and day four the day after that. In this particular instance, <clears throat> we would have entered this position uh, precisely at uh, 44.58 when the stock began to trade above, one penny above the uh, prior day's high of, the, of our inside day. Our first target was hit on the very next day at 45.44. Now, Generally, uh, conservative traders will get out at that point, take a profit, and move on to the next position. If you're a slightly more aggressive player, you might want to have take half of your position at target one, and then move your stop loss up to break even at your entry point of 44.58. That way, at least you have a profit on half of your shares, and then the remaining shares uh, you would have a break-even point of 44.58, and then, if in fact the uh, stock continued to trade higher and hit target number two, as it did in this example, you would you would uh, then sell out another 50% of your shares uh, at $46.30. In this particular case, if we had a thousand shares that entered at 44.58, we would uh, sell immediately. Uh, half of those shares are 500 shares at 45.44. Move our stop loss up to 44.58, our entry price on the remaining shares, 
and then as the stock continued to trade and hit our target number two we would settle out uh, 250 of the remaining 500 shares another 50 percent of our position our existing position at 4630 leaving us with 250 shares yet uh, this particular example did not hit our target number three of 4716 but as we get into the days we have one day two day three day four days we have a uh, fourth day rule which states that you are either to exit the position at the close on the third day or the open of the fourth day whichever you fit your uh, comfort and trading style the best because this trade is really meant to work very very quickly in other words after the fourth day if you're not hitting your profit targets or any of your profit targets and that could happen I mean this could the the uh, the particular type of strategy that we're, we're using generally will have an explosive move like this one but sometimes it'll just kind of hang around down here and won't really make any progress at all if that's the case on the fourth day uh, whether or not we hit our profit targets or not you will want to exit this trade because if it's not working out after the fourth day or then you want to exit it this trade is meant to work very quickly and if it doesn't that means there's something wrong and you really want to get out of the position now aggressive traders may after the fourth day if none of the profit targets are hit you may want to exit the majority of your position but keep a little bit just in case the move starts a little bit late now the one thing I should mention right away is once you do enter the position you want to set a stop loss limit at the opposite end of your inside day in other words if you're you had let's say you set up an entry at the 4458 to go long on the position and you had an entry of 43 point uh, 43 cents in order to go short on the position once one of one side of your entry is filled if your 4458 long position is entered and filled then you want to change this short um, order entry to a uh, stop limit um, and that will be your stop loss limit right here at 4370 as you begin this trade now once you see the position actually starting to hit your profit targets you might want to l raise this stop limit now up to maybe even 50 percent or this 25 percent top line or maybe even your break-even point in other words once your position hits your tar profit target number one you you may want to just lift this uh, stop loss up along with the price trend and kind of follow along with it so that at least if you hit your profit target then that is if you don't exit a hundred percent of your position then you want to make sure that you raise your uh, stop loss along with your profit targets uh, so that you don't if there is a quick reversal you will be able to get out and still maintain your profitability in the position let's talk about trade management for a second the benefit of the trade setup is really is that it's it's really mechanical you have precise entry points for your long position you have precise entry points for your short position so you really don't have a lot of choices in the trade when it comes to um, entering the position you're going slightly above the high of this inside bar and slightly below the low of the inside bar now in some cases as I mentioned aggressive traders can take positions and let's just uh, zoom in here within these 25 percent channel lines aggressive players may actually want to enter a little bit early in anticipation of a breakout to one direction or the other but that's for aggressive traders only in most cases you're probably better off waiting for uh, your entry price which is one cent higher than the high and one cent lower than the low of, of our inside day in some circumstances uh, there's actually a fake out in other words it breaks through the high of the inside day but then immediately reverses and goes lower and I'll show you an example of that very soon if that should happen there's actually an opportunity to reverse your position and even though you've gotten stopped out on a, on a and the position continues to go lower you may have an opportunity to stop and reverse your position and go short once it hits 
the lower end of your entry and your short uh, entry position. But that's uh, really a rule for aggressive traders. I'll show you an example of that and um, it's really quite interesting because and the reason why that would that actually works out very very well is if the fake out comes up to the upside and all of a sudden the bar reverses the day reverses and goes much lower to the downside um, there's a kind of a piling on effect so that you know people know that if it broke through people were buying the stock in anticipation of a breakout and all of a sudden the bears came in and started selling like crazy there's a piling on effect of people who had purchased the stock here now have to sell the position and they're selling it at a much lower price continuing to fuel the selling pressure on the stock driving the stock even lower here's an example in Chesapeake Energy of exactly what a fake out looks like you have an inside bar which is a relatively narrow inside bar at least fifty percent or less of the bar that precedes it this particular inside day uh, if you were to trade this you would have entered a short position at 4902 well as this particular stock traded higher you would have been you would have uh, entered the position at 4902 because it traded lower earlier in the day it reversed and went up hit your, hitting your stop loss at 5001 uh, uh, on the upside of this position fifty dollars and one cents you would have been stopped out of the position then at the end of the day it actually sold off and came back down under this position if you had uh, if you realized that you had gotten faked out and stopped out on this position you probably as an aggressive trader if you are an aggressive trader you would have re-entered your position at 4902 and then you would have hit at least two profit targets here on the short side so sometimes fake outs do happen uh, if you were entered here you got stopped out here you may um, want to re-enter the position after you see that this bar had reversed on the day into the lower 25 percent range and that would have given you an opportunity to profit from this uh, particular position fake outs do happen once in a while they're not really frequent but they do happen occasionally um, they and if you do get stopped out on a it's that's just part of the business you do take a loss every once in a while on these types of positions and that is the risk however if you do see a reversal bar like this it's a fairly low risk opportunity to re-enter the position at the end of the day and then capture profits as that breakout continues to happen on the downside okay now let's talk about exit rules and strategies there are three rules when it comes to exiting the strategy once you have been filled. Uh, rule one is the position hits your stop loss. Remember that's part of the business. You lose money occasionally and you move on to your next trade as it happened in this particular uh, trade. Rule number two is that you hit one or more of your profit targets which is the absolute best scenario. In this case on a, in American Express we hit profit target number one and profit target number two. The third rule is that we count the inside day uh, for the for the trade setup as day number one, and we exit the position at day number four or the close of trading on no day number three, whichever is more comfortable with your style of trading. We close the position whether or not any of the targets have been hit. In other words, we don't hang around for the trade to work, as I mentioned. Either it works or we get out. Conservative players are going to exit the position at target number one. Slightly more aggressive players may consider selling half of their position at target number one, uh, another half remaining position at target number two, and then the remaining position at target number three if it gets hit or on the fourth day uh, as we mentioned. Now there are occasions uh, in special situations that, that we need to discuss to really be comprehensive in this strategy. Number one is if you're trading this particular inside day and you get a gap down the very next day below your short entry price, you don't really need to do anything. Keep your order in and let the price come back up to your entry price. A gap down usually indicates strong selling activity. For example, let's say it 
let's say in this particular example, uh, the price gaps down here. If the price should gap down here, it means that there's strong selling activity and selling orders have been building up and entered before the market opens. This usually means there's a higher probability of being profitable in the short trade if your order is filled. If it gaps down to here, it trades back up to your entry price at 40, 40, uh, 43.70. You short the stock at that position. Generally, you'll be in a, it would be actually a much better trade for you if your position is filled and because of the selling pressure on the stock, uh, the stock will continue and hit one or more of your profit targets. If the price does not come back up to your entry price, do not chase the trade. Let it go. There's always going to be another trade. Now on the opposite end, if the, ga uh, if the uh, stock should gap higher, actually as it did in this example, the stock actually did gap higher than your entry price. However, it traded back down into our entry price at 44.58 in which we got filled. This is a uh, scenario in which it, you could have a high prof probability of profit, in fact, if this did happen. In this case, we did hit one or more of our profit targets, even though the, gap, the stock gapped higher the very next day that we were looking to enter the position. If the stock gaps higher and does not come back to fill our entry at 44.58, do not chase the trade. Let it go. Like I said, there's always going to be another trade. Now let's take a look at some examples in different uh, stocks. That some, some I've traded, some I haven't, but we can take a look at some examples of how exactly to identify an inside day, how we're going to trade it, and uh, take a look at some examples. Now in this particular inside day here, as you can see, uh, this is kind of interesting because the actually the range of this particular inside day bar was fairly wide. It was over 80% of the previous day's bar. And normally I don't like to trade those. However, it did have a spinning top. I mean, it was it was a fairly narrow body here. And generally what happens is with a narrow body in candlestick terms, uh, there's a potential change of trend. And uh, if you if you take a look at this particular chart, you can see there was an uptrend. There was a pullback here with a gap below, uh, gap below this particular bar here. Uh, general, sometimes that provides uh, resistance. Sometimes it provides support. Sometimes those gaps need to be filled. But in any case, I felt there was enough of a downturn in this stock at fairly high volume that maybe maybe there was a snap coming back. So I decided to trade this particular inside bar with an entry at $70.54, which was just one penny higher than the, the inside bar that's here. Uh, it hit profit target uh, number one uh, almost immediately on day two, or I'm sorry, on day three, because day one is our inside day, day two is the next day, which we entered the position. On day three, we hit profit target number one. We never got to profit target number uh, two, but on day one, two, three, and four, uh, we would have exited on the open of day four, which is right in here, very close to our profit target number one on the remaining position. Um, after that, it sold off quite dramatically. And a lot of times, uh, here's a little bit of a nuance for uh, those who are really interested in trading inside days, is that sometimes inside days, if you extend uh, the highs and lows, they provide, uh, sometimes they provide support, sometimes they provide resistance. But a lot of times, uh, stocks will trade around these areas. For example, as it went up and it hit our profit target, it started to come back down again following the, the, uh, the trend that was started back here. And it actually sold off rather dramatically. Aggressive traders may extend these, extend these uh, channels a little bit further and take positions as they close below these channels after several days of being out of your initial trade. Uh, sometimes those can be very, very profitable trades. Uh, let's take a look at some other uh, examples here. Let's say let's let's pick one that we really haven't picked up on yet. Oh, here's one in particular that looks like a, an inside day that we could take a look at. Uh, if you take a look at this chart here, you can see there's one inside day right here, and that looks like a fairly good trading opportunity, and it probably would have been a very good uh, trading opportunity at the time. All we have to do is set up our channels 
on the stock take a look at our entry which would be at uh, the high of this particular inside bar was seventy one dollars and ten cents we would have entered at seventy one eleven which we would have gotten filled the very next day as it did trade down to as low as seventy one oh five we would have hit our profit target probably profit target number one right around in here uh... we would have hit another profit target maybe up in here and then our third profit target probably would have been up in here so we would have hit all three profit targets on this particular inside day uh... let's take a look at some other examples here um, here's a pin side day here it also has a small real body we could go ahead and draw our channel on that all we do is stop, start at the top of the bar let's draw it all the way across just to kind of give give a sense of how sometimes important these inside days are uh, this particular inside day, um, you can see that it has a lower high than the previous bar, and it has a higher low than the previous bar. So it does, you know, qualify as an inside day. Uh, we would have gone long just above the high here, which was 67.97. We would have gone long at 67.98. It never uh, broke the low of this particular day, so we would have gotten filled right in here. Um, right around 67.98. Uh, first tar profit target probably would have been someplace right in here. Second profit target probably right in here. We would have hit two profit targets. We would have had day one, day two, day three, day four. We would have gotten out at the open on this particular day. Uh, so we would that would have been a, a very successful, profitable trade. Now take a look at this inside day, and if you take a look at the channel that we've drawn across here we've just extended it it turned out that the high of this inside day was also support for this particular bar here in which the the, uh, the trade actually uh, uh, the stock actually at that point started trading higher so it can act as uh, resistance and support uh, uh, let's take a look at some other examples uh, this does not qualify as an inside day I started looking at this but it does have a higher high than this particular day in front of it uh, let's take a look at another inside day here. That's not an inside day. That's not an inside day. Uh, they're fairly frequent, and you can find them, but uh, you know you just have to kind of go through it. Pretty soon you get pretty. You know you you'll have a very 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 good uh, grasp and understanding of the inside days. Here's an inside day here. It does have a fairly wide uh, body. It's probably 60% of the previous bar. But it turned out to be a good trade. Uh, we went long here. We exited. Uh, our first profit target was right in here around 83.12. So we got a little bit over um, the high of that bar was 81.74. We would have gone long at 81.75. So we got a, about a point and a half here in our uh, first profit target. As I mentioned, um, this provides some. Sometimes it provides support and resistance points. Uh, the trade actually did start to come down a little bit. It broke through here. Um, and upon re-entry into this 25% area, you could have gone short again and then exited, you know, someplace down in here. Uh, actually, it traded back up into this area again and then sold off dramatically after that. Um, let's take a look at some more recent ones here. Uh, this was really a good trade. Uh, the high on this particular inside day was 68.38. We could have gone long at 68.39. Uh, we would have hit uh, at least one or two potentially. Pro we hit uh, profit target one, profit target two on the on the same day. Uh, this is day one, day two, day three, day four. We would have exited at the open on day four. So we would have hit a couple of different profit targets on that one. Uh, this profit, this this target here actually turned out to be a fake out. Uh, it went higher and then it gapped lower, uh, taking us out of the trade here, and that one didn't work out so well. Uh, let's take a look at some other stocks here. Uh, just at random, let's take a look at Starbucks for a second. Let's see if there are any particularly good opportunities here. Uh, here's one trade that was uh, quite nice. Uh, nice, nice long red bar here, although the, the size of the bar preceding the inside day doesn't really matter. I have noticed that the if it has a large real body, 
uh, and then a small real body afterwards. It se the, the trades tend to see to be a little bit better in quality. In this particular trade, uh, we had our entry at $17.44. Uh, it traded down. It hit uh, target number one. It didn't hit target number two. This low right here turned out to be $16.88, and our target was $16.82. You could have, you know, anticipated maybe that it wasn't going to hold that low or go any lower at that point and could have exited your position. Uh, otherwise, you would have exited at the open here uh, on day four on your position. Uh, let, uh, let's see what else we can find here. Let's go over to SanDisk. And uh, it was a profitable situation back here in January. Um, I'm sure there's many more. Uh, sometimes I get bored of a stock and I move on to other ones. But this in, in this particular day, we had a uh, fairly wide bar here, but it has small real body followed by a small real body uh, narrow uh, inside day bar. And uh, our entry was here at 28.74. Uh, the very next day, it hit our target number one. Uh, the very next day after that, it hit our target number two. At that point, the stock started selling off, and uh, it would probably would have been a, a good idea if you did see this particular day sell off to exit your position at the close of that day when you see that kind of a reversal going on because you really want the uh, price to continue in the direction uh, of your trade. And if it doesn't, and if it reverses below, many times what I'll do is I'll set 50% of this bar here. So in other words, if I get an entry here and I've got a nice large bar here where I, I hit my first target, I'm going to set 50% of that bar as my target uh, not to go below. But it did hit our target number two. So if you had multiple shares, for example, on this trade, or if I was doing this trade, I would sell five, 500 shares at 29.79, and then uh, I would uh, sell out the remaining half of the shares at, at 200, 250 shares at 3082 and then as it started pulling back about around 50 percent of this white bar here uh, I would sell uh, the remaining 250 shares so that turned out to be a very profitable trade uh, let's take a look at some other trades uh, including some other stocks uh, let's take a look at a really high flyer um, like Potash, which is a uh, very high price stock. Um, normally, I found that, uh, that you get a lot more uh, and you get much better signals and setups on trades on stocks between 40, uh, between 20 and 40, maybe even $60 is fine. Uh, let's take a look at this uh, just in case you like to trade uh, higher price stocks. Uh, this one in particular, it looks like there's a um, inside day right in here. Uh, all we have to do is go in and take our channel line, uh, set these up at the high and low of the inside day. In this particular instance, uh, we would have entered a short position right here, which was a low, which is one cent lower than the low of this particular inside day, <clears throat> or we would have gone short at. Um, 177.71 and right now it's at 170.20 so you can use different types of stocks you can use uh, you can use high price stocks you can pr use low price stocks it doesn't really matter let's take a look at Nvidia uh, this stock has been all absolutely all over the map let's take a look and see if we can find any inside days on this particular stock uh, let's see we'll go back here to July of 2007 and see if we can find any setups here uh, I think there's one right here. We had a long red body, and we have a small, uh, small body uh, inside day right here. We can set up our uh, channel lines right in here. Now remember, for these particular trades, we don't care if the stock goes up or down after our entry because uh, we have orders on both sides. In this case we had a long red bar, we had a small uh, white bar following it which is our inside day. 
we would have gone long right in here, which is just above our high price on our inside day at 22.56. We would have gone long. It looks like it did trade down below the low here, and we may have gotten stopped out right in here before hitting our profit targets. But if we had stayed in this, it would have been one, two, three, four days, we would have had a nice little profit here. Uh, many times, uh, depending on the stock, I mean, the the stops that I set are one cent below the low here, but you can actually set different types of stops depending on your comfort level. In this particular case, you might have wanted to have set your stops a little bit lower, maybe even the low of the prior day's bar especially if uh, this particular bar is on the lower end of the bar that precedes it. So you can set your stop down here rather than setting it to the low of this particular day. It does increase your risk a little bit, but it does give it a little extra room to move as well. And this would have been a profitable trade had you had done that. Let's take a look and see if there's any additional opportunities in NVIDIA here. Uh, we're looking for inside days that look particularly good. Normally, if you take take the higher uh, range bars here and then try to find a uh, inside bar against those, those tend to work out more often. Let's see here. This is totally random and totally unplanned <laughs> on my part. Uh, we're just kind of taking a look at some inside days. Here we go. Here's an interesting one. We've got a long range red bar here, which uh, which I tend to like when setting up these types of trades. Now, the inside day on this one is actually a fairly large bar and a fairly um, uh, solid bar. Uh, in other words, it has a fairly large real body here. But let's take a look at this one. Uh, it, like I said, you don't, I mean, none of these are particularly perfect, but they do you know work out <clears throat> so you would have had an entry at the high of this one cent above the high of this bar which was thirty two dollars and sixty eight cents you would have entered at thirty two sixty nine right in here now this did kind of reverse and go back down but it didn't go into the tw lower twenty five percent channel range so you would have been able to stay in this trade and you would have set your uh... i would have set my stop limit at the at the low of this channel at the low of that bar uh, which was 31.47 minus a penny, 31.46. And the trade uh, did actually go higher, and it looks like you would probably would have hit uh, at least one uh, target, maybe even two. One, two, three, four. You probably would have gotten out on this day right here. Uh, let's continue in NVIDIA, see if we can find any other opportunities here uh, as they were presented. Now, remember, you can do this on any stock. So if you're scanning several different types of stocks, you can also um, you know do this on multiple issues here's another inside day let's take a look at this one so you can see there's plenty of opportunities out there uh, this particular inside day is quite interesting because it actually ended right at the high of the day uh, in this case because the low this is a as a high upper real body and a white bar besides um, I would have I may have set my stop a little bit differently, maybe down, you know, down here, maybe in the 25% range, but we would have gotten filled uh, just one penny above the high here at 36.14. The high of this uh, inside bar is uh, 36.13. We would have gotten filled at uh, 36.14 uh, right in here. Uh, we would have hit at least one profit target, and certainly on day four, we would have hit our, our second, maybe even our third profit target on this particular day. This was actually, a, looks like a very, very good trade that was set up here. Um, <clears throat> let's continue to go down here, see if we can find any additional trades. But the trades that you find are just all over the place. Let's take a look at some r more random stocks, maybe from... Uh, uh, some some of my watch list here. Let's take a look at some pop uh, some some very liquid, highly liquid stocks like uh, Procter and Gamble here, and let's just take a look at uh, some of the trades that may have been set up that we could have gotten into here. Let's take a look at here's one right here. I see immediately here, just the first one I see. Uh, we take a channel line, 
go up here, high, low, uh, didn't look like it violated the low, we would have gone long right in here, we would, hit, we would have hit at least one, maybe even two profit targets on that. Let's keep skimming along here, see if we can find some additional opportunities. There's one right here. We take the high of that, bring it across, take the low. Our entry would have been just above the high of this inside bar day, which was 6024. We would have gone long at 6025. Um, our stop was down either. Like I said, you know, you can set your stop below this uh, bar here, your inside day, or the prior is the, or the 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 uh, day before that. So you could have set your stop down in here if you wanted to give it a little bit more room. But in this case, we hit uh, day one, day two, day three, day four. We would have hit at least one, maybe even two profit targets on this particular day. Uh, for aggressive traders, uh, if you think that the particular stock is in an uptrend, uh, here's something very interesting. Uh, I've got a 20-day moving average here that looks it appears to be support for the stock. If you wanted to, you could have been had a little bit more confidence in this position by just you know uh, uh, exiting a portion of your trade, maybe even saving a small lot to continue higher here uh, in this trade. Uh, let's scan along and see if we can find some additional opportunities in Procter and Gamble. Uh, Uh, here's one. I mean, there's lots of opportunities for doing this. Very few people actually try to pick up on these, though. Uh, it's unusual. Whoops, I picked up the wrong tool. I've got to pick up my channel line. Um, it's right around the same lines, so. though. I would have picked up this inside day here. Uh, it looks like it could have, br it did break through, but it was a fake out. It did end up closing in the lower 25% range here in which you probably could have uh, gone short at that time uh, and you probably would have hit at least one profit target down here. Um, that's not the ideal setup though because this bar is particularly weak. It's not a, a large solid body, body bar and this one is not a, sh a small body bar. Um, so they're about equal so I'm not really sure if that uh, I mean, it's not a strict criteria. Uh, the criteria really is that as long as it's an inside day, you can trade it. Uh, but once you get used to, once you start doing these more often, you start to look up and pick up some of the nuances of the particular type of bars that you would like to trade. And you know, your 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 appetite for risk, your aggressiveness, and other factors would probably indicate. Um, you know which bars, which uh, setups you actually want to take, and those that you don't want to take. For example, this is a very large red bar here, and you've got a. Uh, this fits the definition of an inside bar, but I don't think I'm gonna. I would take this one because of the size of this red bar. Uh, it's just something, and also the size of the inside day bar. Normally, this inside day bar would be much larger than any of the bars preceding it. So I would not consider this to be a narrow inside day bar. It definitely is an inside day bar, but it's not a narrow one. So I would not take that trade. Here's one that looks particularly good that you could have traded. Uh, let's just check make sure the high of this particular day is $60.14. The high of this day is $60.13. So you had a potential trade there. You would have gotten uh, filled at uh, $60.14 on this trade, and you would have hit at least one, two, maybe even three profit targets on this one. Um, the low on this, the uh, stop level on this, I probably would have set to the low of this bar, the previous bar. That would have been my stop right in there only because it closed in the higher end. I think I probably would have uh, preferred uh, a stop down here just to give that trade a little bit more room. And if I got filled on the short side, I probably would have set the stop at this. Actually, these are pretty close to being similar, but I would have set it up there as well. 
Uh, let's take a look and see if, if you're getting bored with Procter & Gamble, we can move on to another stock. But I just want to give you some examples of actually how frequent these happen. Uh, these are not rare occurrences. They actually happen quite frequently in the markets, and they are tradable events. Uh, here's one that would, I don't want to give you examples of all examples of ones that, you know, actually would have worked out very, very well uh, and always perfectly. Let me give you this as an example. The high on this was 61.92. The high was 61.92. Okay. If you have equal highs, like these two bars I'm talking about right here, the highs are identical, 61.92 and 61.92. That is not an inside day trade. I would not have taken that trade. It looks close, but I would not have taken it. Here's one in particular. It looks interesting. Uh, we've got a long red body with a tail. We've got an inside day uh, that actually has a small real body on it. Uh, I'm trying to find some losers for you uh, if I can. But I want to give you as many examples um, without, any, without rehearsing or a any kind of rehearsal at all on these. Uh, these are totally random picks on my part just to see if we can find inside day trades. Uh, in this one in particular, you would have had a um, short entry at the low of this bar at 59.74 and an entry on the on a high of this bar at um, $60.18. You would have gotten filled right in here. And you probably would have hit at least one, two, maybe even three profit targets based on day four. So you've got day one, day two, day three, and day four. You would hit all three profit targets probably on this particular trade. That was a nice one. Uh, let me see if I can find some that are failures and total losers here. Um, uh, here's one. Here's one that probably would have set up okay. Uh, you've got a white bar and an inside day. Now this in inside day is fairly large, but it it is tradable. Uh, you would have you would have gotten f you would have not have gotten filled on the very next day uh, at one penny below the low of this bar. Uh, the low of this bar was 61.45. You would have entered your order to go short at 61.44 or long at the high of this bar at uh, 61.88. <laughs> that would not have gotten filled. This would not have gotten filled because it gapped down. It did not trade back up so that you could get filled. It did trade back up to get filled on this day, which is interesting. You would have gotten filled at your uh, short on your short position here at uh, 6144. Uh, it would have never uh, gone into the upper 25 percentile range. It would have never triggered your stop loss. But you're talking one, two, three, four days. You would have hit maybe one profit target here um, and exited the position because uh, it was day four of the position. So you would have gotten out at that time. So that wasn't a big winner, and it was. It's this is kind of an unusual setup. So that was a good example for you. Uh, of uh, sometimes these things do happen. Uh, here's a losing. Um, yeah, I'll pick out a loser for you. I don't think I would have traded this because the prior day. Uh, was kind of an odd uh, small body day. I like them, uh, large real bodies rather in my candlesticks uh, prior to my inside day. But this one in particular would have gotten filled on your long side here. Um, it would have gotten stopped out the very next day. Uh, however, it had an opportunity here for a uh, reverse play and you may have hit one or two targets uh, back on the fourth day but this would have this would have gone up gotten filled and then it would have gotten stopped out down here so that would have been a losing uh, uh, losing position for you losing setup however you could have uh, if you were interested you could have reversed the position and gone short and you would have hit maybe one maybe even two targets uh, profit targets on the other side of that trade uh, let me take a look at some more if we want to we can change stocks uh, let's go over to IWM. Now you can also trade this. It doesn't necessarily have to be a uh, stock. It can be an index like the IWM. Uh, in this case, um, we have an inside day here. We've got to have gone short here. We probably would have, would, would have hit at least one, maybe even two profit targets. Um, 
in this case I use this as a um, I use this inside day as a support and resistance point and what I did was here let me show you uh, I lost it where to go oh here it is um, as I mentioned, you can use inside days as support and resistance points. And as soon as this uh, came above this uh, top res uh, channel area here, uh, I used it as an opportunity to go short on the IWM only because it looked like it was establishing a new downtrend. And uh, that's one uh, kind of a side benefit, a nuance of inside days is that they do act as support and resistance points and prices tend to vacillate around them sometimes. At this time I was looking at shorting the IWM and it was a great opportunity because it did dip above the uh, this particular high of this inside day. It closed below it and it offered an opportunity to sell which turned out to be a very very good trade days just uh, beyond that. Uh, let's see if there's anything else available here in the IWM. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a stock. It could be a an ETF as well. Uh, let's see. Here's one right here. I don't think this would have gotten filled though. Uh, it has it has a nice ideal setup because it has a nice large red body. If that was a large white body, it would have been the same thing. But you've got a large red body with a small bodied uh, spinning top candle. Um, eh, pretty much a spinning top. It's got a fairly fat white uh, uh, real body in there. But still, uh, you would have entered uh, your position to go long just above this bar and short just below it. You would, have, you would not have gotten filled on either one of those. After day four, uh, you would have... Uh, closed your order entry positions and not gotten filled on on this particular setup but it did trade higher and you know if you did have an opportunity to get into it it would have worked that well and probably hit one or more profit targets but in this case it gapped uh, much higher and it did not trade back down so you would not have gotten filled and that's fine um, like I said don't chase these trades just let them go uh, there's always there's always opportunities and as you can see, as we as we're going through many of these charts, there's plenty of opportunities out there. You know, you don't have to just um, see. This looks like it could be an inside day, but it's not because this bar is this particular high is is higher than the uh, high of the day before it. Now we're just kind of going through here to see if I can see some additional opportunities. Here's one here. Uh, this is not an ideal setup, but I don't want to give you all ideal setups. <laughs> Uh, actually, I'm not looking for ideal setups, but I am looking for just setups. Uh, but this is an inside day right here. Um, you know, not a bad little setup maybe because of this white bar here pre preceding this, uh, the bar that precedes it. But this is technically an inside day. You would have gone short here. You would have hit at least one profit target here, maybe two, but at least one. And you can see how the prices kind of tend to vacillate around this inside day. Uh, as as it went forward here. Here's another inside day. Uh, as you as you get you know more experience doing this, you'll be able to pick these up pretty quick. Uh, this particular low was 67.98. This low was uh, 68.02. So it's a little bit higher low, so that would qualify as an inside day. Uh, it did not get filled though because it, it gapped higher uh, the very next day and it never traded back down into your entry area. So we let that one go and we move on to the next trade. Uh, here's one in particular that uh, reversed and uh, this was a trade that uh, you could short here. You may have hit one, probably one profit target down here. In this case, however, it reversed and it went higher. So you probably, if you saw it starting to reverse down in here, you might have gotten to the point where, you know, you would have exited that trade. And that's what I did on this particular trade here. Uh, here's another one uh, that was set up. You went short here as it entered the lower end of this trading, uh, this particular channel. And you would have hit at least one, probably just one, um, area though. 
let's go on to another let's just pick a stock at random here now uh, here's a couple here let's see BWA Uh, let's see, we would have had, um, let's go back here a little bit and see if we can find something at random. Uh, that's not an inside day. This is an inside day right here. I'm just trying to give you ex as many examples as I possibly can. Uh, you would have gotten filled here. You would hit at least one. Let's go to another stock here. Let's go to Dell. I'll give you one or two more examples here. Um, let's go back. Uh, let's see if anything stands out. Here's an inside day here. Let's see how this would have worked out. This one had a particularly long red body. It also had a um, had a very long bar range here. I would not have picked that one. That would not. That was. That, that's not particularly attractive to me. This one, on the other hand, is a little bit more attractive with the big white bar and the small red body here. Could have drawn our lines here. Uh, we would not have gotten filled on the short side. We'd have gotten long on the on the on the uh, long side, and we would have hit at least one profit target, maybe two on day four. And one more example here, and then we'll kind of wrap this up, I guess. <clears throat> Here's one here. Oops. Go back here to my charts. Let me go to my drawing tools channels, and looks like there's one right in here. Uh, this one we would have gone short right here at the at, at the low of this particular inside day, which was the low of this day was 24.09. Would have gone short short at 24.08. Uh, we would have hit at least one profit target here. On the very next day, we would have hit uh, the second profit target, maybe even the third profit target. So that would have worked out very, very nicely right here. So anyway, those are some examples. There's more examples of uh, trades hitting profit targets and not and reversing and so forth in the uh, guide. Uh, I hope you uh, take a look at the video companion quick start guide for more examples and a detailed written um, uh, pages on exactly what inside days are, objectives, uh, identifying inside days, the setup, why the trade works, entrance criteria, stops, trade management, calculating profit targets, exit rules and strategies, special situations, and more example trades. So I want to thank you guys very much. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities out there for these particular kinds of trades. And as I'm looking, as I mentioned, there's lots of opportunities. Now, you know, once you begin to recognize these particular types of trades, you see them all the time. And in this particular trade, I may have, now this is not in the quick start guide, but I may have set my stop loss down here just to give that a little bit more room since this closed in the upper end of this particular bar. But it looks like I would have gotten filled and uh, stopped out here. However, it looks like it could have reversed and gone higher, and that would have been a very nice trade indeed. Uh, and if you're an aggressive player, you could have actually, you know, kept part of your position uh, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> anyway, I wish you guys the best of luck and go out there and trade with confidence.